Okay, let's get super over my head and talk a little bit about the different ways to set up your network architecture. There are basically two broad categories. You can do peer-to-peer -peer or you can do client-server. Peer-to-peer means that when you are playing multiplayer with a group of people, you are communicating amongst all of the different people who are playing. And likely every single instance of the game is responsible for figuring out what's going on. There's no centralized repository. There's no central server deciding what is happening. Some, some games are pure peer-to-peer -peer and there's no one in charge, but usually what you actually have in a peer-to-peer -peer game is one of the people who is playing is a host and they sort of win in the case of disagreements and they're responsible for controlling the flow of information to some degree. So why would you do peer-to-peer? -peer? Well, the primary reason for peer-to-peer -peer is that you have no background costs. There are no servers being run. The people who are playing the game are providing the computing power to run the game themselves. So there's no ongoing cost to run a completely peer-to-peer -peer service. But it does come with some consequences. First of all, data integrity is a little bit more difficult because everyone is kind of in charge of themselves to some degree. So that means there are often vectors for insertion of fraudulent data and ways to cheat. That's why you usually have someone who is a host to try to mitigate that and provide some degree of integrity back into the system. Any of you who played the original Diablo way back in the day might remember that there was this exploit where people were able to do all this stuff, uh, cast spells in town, things like that, which should have been impossible, but because of its network architecture, they were able to essentially spoof out the client and uh, and do a bunch of stuff. If you have some sort of host, which you probably need to, then what you also want to do is have something that's called host migration. So host migration is the actions that you take if the host goes away for some reason. Lightning hit their internet provider and their internet goes down. What happens? So if you have poor host migration, what happens is the match ends. The host is gone, the game crashes out or returns to the, to the matchmaking screen, the host is no longer there. If you look at a game like Destiny, Destiny has really, really good host migration. If their host goes down, the control of the match transfers basically seamlessly to someone else in the match and the game just keeps going without even seeming to miss a beat at all. And that can be really hard to write, but that's what they did for Destiny. Totally worth it if you're going to go this way. So one of the consequences of having things happen on the clients is you're actually asking the console, the PC that the person is running the game on to do more, which can mean that you have to trade some fidelity for making that happen. Probably if you have a host, one of the people playing is taking on an even greater burden than everyone else. And this can cause an uneven performance between the people playing the game. You see this uh, as something that people rail against in certain shooters where the person who is the host might have a disadvantage. Or actually the opposite can also be true because they have effectively zero latency to this, this authentication host, they can actually have it advantage depending on how it's implemented. So both things can actually be true. On the flip side, client server, you have a central server run by the game studio, possibly hosted in Amazon or Microsoft's cloud, probably hosted in Amazon's cloud, that runs some or all of the game logic. This has a couple of big advantages. It offloads a bunch of work from the individual clients into the centralized server. You can do more complicated game logic than you could do on a modern console because you can throw whatever amount of resources you want at the back end. 
And so now your client is really just responsible for rendering the game, drawing the game, making it look pretty and go fast. That's a huge benefit. It also, because it's not inside of first party's ecosystem, gives you an opportunity to update the game really, really quickly. There's no certification on what is on the servers. So if you wanna change the math, if you wanna change entire chunks of your server code, you can do that without going through a certification process. And that can be really beneficial for live service games that need to be updating just constantly. There's this opportunity to actually do updates without a lot of friction at all. But of course, like peer to peer it comes with costs. One of the obvious ones is you have to actually pay for servers. One of the things that kills a lot of live service games is the fact that eventually the cost of their servers becomes too great because not very many people are playing, but the servers still have to be there to be ready to accept people who are playing. And maybe the game isn't bringing in much money anymore and it becomes this ongoing cost that just is an irritant that eventually most game publishers decide isn't worth paying and they shut down their servers. Additionally, because everything is done centrally, you've introduced latency inherent into your system. So if the server is what determines whether or not a bullet hits somebody, you shoot a gun, potentially you've got hundreds of milliseconds of delay before you see what's happening. The way that uh, games usually deal with that is they do some sort of client side prediction to figure out what's gonna probably happen, put up some UI and obfuscate what's going on to allow it to seem much more responsive than it truly is. And if you do that well, you can't really tell the difference. But if you don't do that well, you have this very stepwise reaction to gameplay. Well constructed, the player can't really tell the difference between client server or peer to peer, but there is a lot of clever stuff going on in the background to try to hide what is actually going on. What should you do? It's actually kind of a question that's very dependent upon the game that you're doing. If you are building something where you want very tight control over what's going on, very high integrity on your data, everyone on a level playing field because no one is doing extra calculations than anyone else, client server with dedicated servers makes a lot of sense. You see this in shooters where the more competitive players want dedicated servers because they want to level the playing field for everyone. If on the other hand, you're looking to create a game where you want the live service to run for a really long time and you're less concerned about data integrity and you're willing to take a fidelity hit because you're doing more on every single uh, client, peer-to-peer -peer might be a better choice because you are able to run your service without a lot of ongoing costs. Of course, I sp I'm speaking in absolutes here, but the reality is, is that most games have some degree of client authoritative action going on, making them kind of peer-to-peer. -peer. And almost all games have some sort of background server that's storing something, making them client server. So really it's a spectrum, but usually there isn't a lot in the middle. Usually you have something that is mostly client server with a little bit of client authoritative stuff or something that is mostly peer to peer with a little bit of centralized data. You don't usually have something sitting right in the middle. So this is a choice you're gonna have to make on your own. The consequences of that choice can be long reaching. Anthem is client server, ultimately, it's likely that the Anthem servers will get shut down at some point because it's an ongoing cost center. Anthem is so client server that even when you were playing the single player missions in the tutorial at the beginning of the game, even that is running on the centralized server. A special thanks to my members. They provide the resources that this channel needs to keep running. If you are interested in becoming a member, there'll be a link down in the description. How do I do? Are you a network programmer? Did I kind of hit the major points of the difference between these two things? I'm trying to keep it high level, so hopefully I did okay. If I didn't, let me know down in the comments and you can tell me what I did wrong. What other incredibly technical things do you want me to try to 
simplify to the point of being understandable? Let me know that down in the comments as well. I will see you again soon. Thank you.